So welcome to this lecture where we're going to take a look at modifying elements styles. So we know that JavaScript interprets our DOM into JavaScript objects. And when we manipulate those objects, then we tell the DOM to go ahead and re-render whatever we've changed. So what I want to do is now take you through a simple example of a div element that has styles placed on it and how those styles show up in JavaScript. So we have a simple HTML page and it has two div elements on it and they're being styled differently. So it's important for you to note that there are different ways you can style your elements and the first way is the most popular way with this blue div right here. We have simplified the DOM by adding some CSS by creating a style sheet between these two style tags and writing some CSS. That way you're omitting the styles out of the DOM. Okay, this is in the DOM, but most of the time you'll find the CSS in an external CSS file. And then the browser will read that file into the HTML page and via the CSS selectors, what it will do is it will go find the element via the CSS selector and apply those styles. And you can see that this keeps your DOM nice and neat. And most people do this. But as JavaScript developers, we can't actually start playing around with the CSS style sheet as such. Now, as JavaScript developers, we're more interested in the style attribute, which will allow us to apply CSS styles to an element. So we have the style attribute that will take its value and apply those styles to the element where the style attribute is applied. Now, the only issue is this can end up cluttering your DOM syntax. It doesn't look very good and it's not part of the best practices. It doesn't make your code manageable. It's not good for your code. So most people use external CSS style sheets. That's absolutely fine. But as JavaScript developers, we're not really writing out thousands of lines of CSS code. We're not doing that. So usually in JavaScript, we're only manipulating maybe two, three, or four, or five styles, and we're letting the JavaScript JIT compiler deal with the style attribute in an ordered manner. So we have to use the style attribute on DOM elements and then start applying different styles and so forth via the style attribute. But before we look at manipulating the styles of an element, which in JavaScript, you can only do that through the style attribute. But however, how do I find out existing styles that already apply to elements? Now, it's not as simple as what you might think. And that's because these are computed styles. So with your CSS files and CSS style sheets, whether they are embedded directly in the DOM like this, or whether they are an external style sheet, they are called computed styles, meaning those styles went through the CSS interpreter. And don't forget every language in the browser, whether it be HTML, CSS, or JavaScript has to be interpreted. So CSS goes through the CSS compiler, the program that compiles CSS and renders the page accordingly. And so we have some computed styles. Now, how do we find out those computed styles in JavaScript? Now, as I said, you cannot change these styles right here. You can't do that. But what you can do is use the style attribute to override those computed styles. But first and foremost, let's stick to the task at hand, which is finding out the computed styles for this div element right here with the ID of blue. And you can even see in the inspection window, you have the computed tab that will tell you all of the computed styles on this particular element. So I'm going to open up the console. So firstly, I want to take a look at the object that resembles the blue div element and see if I can find any information about the computed styles. So I'm going to say get element by ID and then I'm looking for the element with the ID of blue. So this element has the computed styles on it. Now do those computed styles show up in the object that is supposed to resemble 
that element in JavaScript. Can we find that data? The simple answer is no. If we go down to the style property that contains the style object, you will notice that this object has all of its values empty for all of the possible CSS properties that could be applied to this element. And let's take one use case and example. Let's say we have the width property. Well, that in the moment has no value, but yet in my style sheet, I set the width to 100 pixels. So why isn't that showing 100 pixels? And the same goes for the height and all of the other CSS properties that I've applied to this element via the computed styles. And the reason why it doesn't show up is because this object is keeping track of all the possible CSS properties that could be applied to this element through the style attribute, not the computed styles. So JavaScript is only really interested in the style attribute because that's the attribute that when you want to go and let's say animate something or change it in some way, then it actually wants the style attribute and it's starting to apply styles via this attribute, but it's not interested in the computed styles. Those styles have been computed and interpreted. They really aren't much of an interest to us in JavaScript, but you can find out the property values, but you can't just call up the object that's supposed to be associated with it because the style embedded object that we have only applies to styles that have been applied through the style attribute, not the computed styles. So I need to close that all up. And then what we need to do is do something a bit special. I need to use the get computed style function. And this function right here needs an argument passing into it. Otherwise you'll just get an error. And what does it need? It actually needs this object right here, this elements object. And then from that, it will get the computed styles. So we say get computed style. And then we say document dot get element by ID, which will, don't forget, fetch the object in question. And we're looking for the element with the ID of blue. So that will fetch that object. And then that object will be returned to this function or be passed to this function. And then that function will go off and fetch the computed styles. Now you'll notice that this comes up very, very strange. We have essentially what is an array because don't forget an array is an object and we have the keys zero, one, two, da, 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 da. So these are all the possible CSS properties that could have been applied through the computed CSS style sheets, such as this style sheet or an external style sheet and so forth. But the issue is here that all it's actually done is just given us an array full of possible properties that could be applied. Well, that's not really what we're interested in. We're interested in the values of, let's say, certain properties that have been applied, such as the width, the height, the margin bottom, and so forth. So just having this function on its own get computed style doesn't really have any bearing on anything. It's not giving us the information that we want. So what I shall do is run the same thing again, but then once we say get computed style, I also want to run the get. So I'm chaining two functions together. Now we have the get computed style and another function, which is going to be get property value. And then we need to pass in the property that we want to look up. Well, let's say I want to find out the width. So I'm going to look up the computed styles of the blue div element. And I want you to pull out specifically the width property value. And there we go. It pulls out the value 100 pixels from this style sheet. So these computed styles. So it's not as simple as just targeting that object and then trying to find it by rummaging through that object. You actually have to go through a few different functions in order for you to produce the value that you're looking for.
and also you know you could go and fetch the background property value so I can just say background and you can see here that it does show me a lot of information that I didn't really want to see right here because all I put in was blue but do note that it did actually show me that this does have a blue background you have RGB meaning red green and blue they're your primary colors and 255 which is the max is on blue so that's the blue background and again you just have lots and lots of other pieces of information but that also shows up under the computed section right here you can see the value is RGB so that's really down to the preference of the browser so we can see here that there is a big difference between computed styles so styles that came from a CSS style sheet and styles that come from the style attribute now let's take a look at this element and see these styles that are being applied so I'm gonna clear the console and now I'm gonna type in dir to give me an interactive list then I'm gonna say document dot get element by ID and we're gonna get the element with the ID of red so this object now is resembling this DOM element and this DOM element has the style attribute with quite a few styles applied to it, which is width, height, and background. So now we're looking at this object. We go under the style object. And what we can do is, I mean, you can see that we've got a few things here which look a bit strange, but what I want to do is very quickly show you, look, height 100 pixels, You'll also have width in there, 100 pixels. And also on top of that, you'd have other things like, for example, background color. So if I just go up and up and up, you will find the background property with the string value of red. And it's also filled in some default values for the background as well, such as background attachment and everything else. Initial just means the initial value that it comes with. But you can see here that it's very, very different. The styles that have been applied through the style attribute will show up under the style object. Whereas computed styles, styles that came from a style sheet, you need to, again, run those functions to pull out the values. But right now what I could do is target that object, which is that one right there, and say dot style. So now I can look at the style object. And then I can look at a property within that style object and I can pull out, let's say, the background property. Hit return and there you go. It pulls out the string red that was contained within the background property. Now we are working with a JavaScript object, which means that we're targeting a property. And if you're just targeting a property, then it will print its value out. However, you can also assign a new value to a property. So we're gonna target that property which resembles the CSS background property. And we're gonna give it a new value and instead I'm just going to say green. Now again, what you could do is pass in any acceptable color value into a string. Please do remember that. So you have, let's say, a hash color value. You have RGB, RGBA, HSL, HSLA. You can all provide that information right here. But I'm just going to stick with the standard color names, such as red, green, blue, and so forth. So I'm going to change the background color to green. And you'll notice as soon as I hit return, JavaScript detected, okay, we're looking at an object that resembles a DOM element. We're going into the style object. We're changing the background property, which resembles the CSS background property. And it says, oh, okay, he's changed it to green. Now notice what it did was it went over to the DOM. It simply modified this attribute right here. So it was red. And then all we did was set it to green. So JavaScript did all of that for us, no problem, and it very quickly told the DOM to re-render, and the DOM re-rendered that div element. 
very easy. Now also with applying your CSS properties, I want you to keep this in mind because as you are new to JavaScript, you may be tempted to write out more advanced CSS properties. So background's nice and easy, but what about let's say border radius? Well, saying border hyphen radius, as you normally would in CSS, that would actually error because that property doesn't exist. Now, you may be able to create a property there, but it won't have any effect in the browser. So we don't want to do that. What you need to do is write the CSS property out as you normally would. Then get rid of all hyphens. And then what you need to do is camel case. So for example, you have the first word, which is all lowercase. And then every word after that needs to have a capital letter. So radius needs to have a capital letter. And so this is how you remember how to write this in JavaScript. Get rid of the hyphens and camel case and it's dead easy. And the same goes for prefixed properties, CSS prefix properties such as hyphen webkit hyphen. Well, again, you'd say hyphen webkit hyphen border hyphen radius. You need to get rid of those hyphens. The first word is all lowercase. And then every word after that in the string needs to have a capital letter. But we don't need that prefix on here for the border radius CSS property. And then I need to define a value now that value needs a measurement such as pixels, EMs and so forth. So this must be a string and I'm just going to say pop on there, let's say five pixels. So it's a bit more noticeable. So I hit return and now you'll notice we do have these little rounded edges on our element with the ID of red. And very quickly, if you want to take a look at all the styles available to you, just Take a look at that style object again. So you target, let's say, an element, and then you say dot style, and then it will give you a list of all of the CSS properties that you can actually apply to your element. So that's really nice as well. So now what I'd like to do is actually add some styles to this div element that contradict the computed styles. Now remember, we're not affecting the computed styles at all. But what we are going to do now in JavaScript is add a style property to this div element that has some computed styles. And let's override the height CSS property. So I'm going to open up the console. I need to target the element with the ID of blue. So I'm targeting that element, then targeting the styles and setting the height to 200 pixels. You'll now notice if we go back to elements, our blue div has a style attribute and it has a height property of 200 pixels. Now the CSS properties found within the style attribute will automatically take precedence, meaning it's more important than the computed styles. So that means that the height CSS property found in the style attribute will override the computed style. If I click on that div, you'll notice that this height property on the computed style was crossed out. And this height property is actually active on the elements style attribute. Now there is a way to tell your computed styles to be more important. And that is to target the CSS property and then you type in the value and then you type in exclamation mark important. This will then say, make this value right here more important. And you'll notice that when I activate that, it now overrides the style attributes height CSS property. And it says, look, this is more important. This computed style is more important. Now, the only way to actually then get this CSS property to take even more precedence is again to do the same. So I need to say exclamation mark important. Now, if you do that, if you set a CSS property on the style attribute and its value to exclamation mark important, there is absolutely no way that the computed style can override the styles in the style attribute. So this CSS property will now take the absolute top precedence in the browser. And usually you don't actually want to do this. You want to try and let the computed styles potentially create precedence over the CSS properties in the style attribute, but that's your preference. But this usually is a bad idea. So that is how you affect the styles of your elements.